be God. Is there anything else? To love God with all. This is the first and the greatest commandment. Love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. And there's nothing left for anything else, right? It's a wholehearted love. So let's just, uh, this is a song that uh, touches my heart and has always been made my heart tender. And uh, she will just play it and then I'll uh, be on. I'll be quick. Drawn to your peace. And you just come. She wanted to be blessed. Why don't you go back to San Francisco and do a Thanksgiving event? That was in June. And I said, why am I going to do that? And I forgot that, you know, uh, many, well, for today, 41 years ago, today is actually September 13 was when I got down to the swimming pool and I believe I, I call it my birthday. Born again. You know. I never didn't know we're born again today. I just thought if you dunk you in the pool, born again. Okay. Anyway, so this commences. This is like my 41st first year. But what I heard last year was to celebrate. Because uh, I got, I got saved in San Francisco. I was, you know, really I was at the pits of my life, darkest part of my life, and I just wasn't, you know, um, I wasn't really happy to be alive. In short, I was trying to, you know, end my life, and yet, uh, but what happened is, Jesus walked into my room, and he began my life. And so that's what I mean. Ever since then, my life's never been the same. Amen. And so, I'm, I'm just so glad, so, so you could probably, I just want to give you a little bit of that, so that you can understand, well, I'm so grateful. I am so grateful. Because I could have been six feet under the ground today. And yet I'm alive. Amen. And yet I'm allowed 
to carry a message of love, freedom, deliverance, restoration, and valuation of life. And so I, I never belittled, I've never, you know, I've never devalued, I've always loved what God has done for me. And so that's why I, sometimes, you know, I, I get a little bit too intense, because it is intense. Every second, someone's going to help. Every minute that we tarry and we dilly-dally, uh, lives are destroyed. How do you equate with that? How do you do that? And so, uh, today's uh, event is, like, I believe God just ordained this day. And so those of you who come and, and joined us today, so grateful for you. But I'd like you to know you have made the right choice. Amen. 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 Waking up early in the morning, some of you traveled early in the morning, right? I mean, I know this is going to revolutionize your life. Amen. This is going to change your paradigm from having religion to having a real relationship. Because the policy right now, the church is so needing help from the Holy Ghost. A lot of believers are either sometimes they're just dismayed, they're just distracted, they're just not there. It's, it's time for us to arise and to shine. Amen. Why? Because your light has come. The glory of the Lord is That's risen it. upon us. It's only when we rise up that that glory shines upon us and lifts us up and gives us that unction and that courage so that we may do the impossible, we may do the impossible, and we may become unstoppable. I mean, that's the name. Anyway, so the purpose of today is really bring you the message. I'm sure you already know this and you already have done this, but I, uh, fortunately for me, I carry this message. One thing that I've always carried is uh, uh, John 13, 34, 35. The, a new commandment I give to you. That you love one another even as I have loved you. That's the measure of our love. It's not because you're cute or you're good looking or you're very you know, influential. No. It's, you know, how much did you experience my love in your life? It's how much I demand for you to translate that love to others. And it becomes life. And it becomes impactful because it's not it's not uh, just religious jargon. It's not just you know trying to be you know influential or be known, but it is reality. And that is what we need now in the, in the body of Christ. Truth. Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me." And so you know th that reality. I was I was struck. Uh, I. You know, the encounter that I had with Jesus has just so revolutionized and changed my life. Am I perfect? No. That's why he loves me. Because I'm very imperfect. And he knew that I would just lean on him and cling to him and just, you know, allow my life to be led by him. I don't own myself. I love it when he said, you are mine. Yes. Every single part of me. Every every juncture of my life, every sadness, every tears, every sorrow, every laughter, every joy, every blessing, he tells me, because you are mine. You're never less when you fall. You're never more because you're successful. You are mine. Everything that I am is in you, and everything that in you is mine. Yeah. And one of the things that I'd like to share with you is that there is a cry from the bride of Jesus Christ. And some of them very impish. Some of them very inexpressed. Could not be expressed. But I really believe that the message that we would like to carry today is that we make a loud cry for the voice of the bride. Amen. Because it is a cry that will open up the heavens. It is the cry that will show Abba God that, hey, the bride is getting herself ready. And because until and unless, I'm getting ahead of myself, it's not the part, uh, but I'm going to go there. Uh, unless Father God sees the bride that is destined to be the, 
uh, wedded to his son is ready, is not going to send the son, the bridegroom king, to come to us. So it's the ball is on your court. The ball is in our court. We are all now, hearing the message today makes you and I accountable for what we need to do. Yes. You ready for this? Yeah, we're so asleep for a long time. It's time for us to wake up, right? Amen. It's time for us to be robust. It's time for us to be roused from our catatonic sleep. It's time for us to arise, to shine. The beauty of God is so hidden in us. It needs to be exposed. We need to show off the grandeur, the majesty of God. That's it. I mean, it's not about the props. It's not about the the fog machine. It's not about a grandiose, you know, worship team that's trying to help God's presence. You can't help God's presence. It's time to strip ourselves with all of those props. Amen. Let's just be raw. Let's just be real. Let's yes. just be true. That's why the world cannot be converted because they see the falsehood in us. That's not my message. Anyway, <laughs> that's the privilege of being old. <laughs> All right, so, but what, what are we doing? What are we doing? This part of what I'd like to share at this portion is really my gratefulness. I've been born again for 41 years, and I've been so privileged to be, uh, to be, to minister many ways, many places, to many peoples, to many nations, to many countries. And uh, we do that with no fanfare. We do that under covert. We're, we're always covert, that's why uh, Grace knows that, you know. Like she said, how come there was no name in the poster? Plan, no name. <laughs> because today, a lot of showmanship in the body of Christ, a lot of falls. We can change the world with false. We can only change the world. True. Amen. The plastics, they just burn out and melt. <laughs> but the real endures forever. So that's kind of what I'd like to steer you off with. You know, I've gone through a lot of things, I've gone, but but my God has always stayed with me. Amen. So what we want to do today this morning, we'll have a few things. I've been online. I've, I've been carrying the message of the end times. But I'm carrying the, uh, the, 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 re restor the, the revival of the first and the greatest commandment, which is Matthew 22, 37 to 39. Now, God, when, when, when I was just going to paraphrase it, when uh, a lawyer and a group of Pharisees were just confronting Jesus, asked him, what is the greatest commandment? And he said, the first, he said that, the first and the greatest commandment is that you love God with all your heart with all your mind, with all your soul, and in Mark 13, he says, with all of your strength. And this is taken actually from the Shema. Uh, I think it's Deuteronomy 6. Again, Moses re-emphasizes re that this is the greatest. And Jesus said, great, first and greatest commandment. And, and yet, you know, you don't see this emphasized in the Bible. And my prayer is that there will, we, will be, we will become carrier of this message. We become revivalists of putting this first. Not the showmanship. Not you know, the personality. You know, you know the celebrity-ish type of thing when a showman would just come forth in the pulpit is going to be passé. God is raising up faceless people. Faceless generations. Those that are hidden are coming out because they don't care about names. They don't care about the cross. They don't care about the money. They don't care about all of this, whatever you call it, you know. They're just there because God desires. They're walking towards the desire of God to be accomplished on the earth. Time is so short. Amen. Revelation 12, 12 tells us that the wrath of the devil is being poured out on the earth because he knows his time is short. Sure. And the body of Christ must understand that there is tension happening in the, in the spirit realm. And we've got to flow with the spirit of God. We have to stop being hidden in the wrong attitude. 
We have to start being in the front line with an understanding of what time it is. What time is it? It's two seconds or two minutes before 12, and the earth is going to be no more the way it is. And so the message that we would like to share with you, and hopefully you carry and catch with me, you know, we, I'd, we'd like to gather to make loud the cry of the bride in the end times. That's part of this. And without purposing it to be like that, it's going to happen. I mean, the other morning I just woke up and God says, you know, you can go, I can take you worldwide and carry this message. Because there is a cry, and there is a bride, and there is an end time where we need to rise up and be roused into our posture and position as the bride of Jesus Christ. I mean, we've been called, you know, many names like Body of Christ, Soldiers of God, uh, Church, Ecclesia, but we are only, the ultimate destination of all of us is the Bride of Jesus Christ. And when, if we, when we look at ourselves, we feel like, I'm neither there. I'm goosey as it is. You know, my clothes are crumpled and my face is dirty and I'm full of wrinkles. But that has to change today. So, uh, what we're doing is we, we're praying that you know we're gathered to prepare the bride for her final destiny through what? Number one, understanding times and seasons. Uh, if ever since I got saved, I mean God has always taught me how to understand times and seasons. And you know the men of Issachar, right? In uh, First Chronicles twelve thirty-two, uh, one of the tribes of of, of Israel is the Issachar tribe. And these are men who understood the signs of the times. And on top of that, they also knew how to resolve the situation. So they understand the solution because they know the time and the season. And that is such, you know, in, in the book of Daniel, chapter 10, uh, and we are, you know, in the, this season of uh, the end times, God is going to pour out a, a massive flood of understanding. Because this season, the end times, and understanding the bridal, uh, bridal paradigm and bridegroom paradigm of, uh, of, uh, of the church uh, is, is going to help us to get into that place. Understanding is going to be a very, very important in this season. That's why the prayer of Paul in first uh, in Ephesians 1, 17, I mean, he says, you know, I pray that the spirit of wisdom, revelation be upon you. I mean, he was talking to the uh, uh, Ephesian church, but he's also now in 2022, he's talking to us. I'm praying for you up here in heaven. I'm praying for you. My prayer is still releasing its impact that they, God opened the eyes of their understanding. They cannot understand. Because the season that we are in is going to be very, very, uh, uh, not only you know understanding the urgency, but also understanding what we must do, how we must act, how we must see. Part of our knowledge of God must be opened up. That's the revelation. That's why we need to open our eyes. God needs, we need to come into a place where our eyes are open, not just in the peripherals, not just in the surface, but dig into the superficial. And to stand in a place of uh, a bridal uh, a posture and, and a position, we need that understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I've been blessed to realize in, uh, in, in studying the signs of the times and understanding the preparation of the bride is that, you know, some of us women, and even, even men, you know, if we, would, if we understand the bridal paradigm, uh, we will be good wives and good husbands. Because that's what it is. You know, the, bri the bridal paradigm started in Genesis. That's the first institution that Jesus, that God, you know, really established. And that will be the ending as well, when the marriage happens in the end times. Amen. So, so that, you know, understanding times and seasons, and I've been teaching that, but we won't, we're not going there today. Understanding the signs of the times. We don't know when it's returning, but we can understand when we understand the times, yes. when we know what's going on. Yes. And right now, with the pandemic, the COVID is so global, I believe that that's a sign of the times. Israel being a nation for thousands of years not having a state, 
of their own, uh, you know, and now they're what, 73 years old, right? 73 years old. As a nation, they're the, they're the, the fig tree that Jesus was talking about. When you see that the fig tree is blossoming and, and Israel, the signs of the times. What's going on right now? I mean, whatever is happening here with the Zoom and with the uh, live stream, I mean, we're, we're, we're just global. Amen. And a lot of global things are going to come. I mean, the, the world system is trying to create a one, one government, one economy, one religion. And it's just duplicating what God is really doing, creating a one-man nation. Amen. But so, understanding that, and then by understanding also the Israel as key signpost in the return of Jesus. That's what I'm trying to say. And uh, Nena is going to give us a little bit of uh, snippet insight on, on um, insights on Israel. We've been, you know, those of you, if you would like to join us every Friday night at nine, right? Uh, we do have insights on Israel yeah, as part of our online classes. So, so understanding that, and of course, I started to uh, um, talk about understanding a revival of first and greatest commandment because uh, understanding and really entering into a a intimate relationship with God is going to be so key so that we may be positioned as a bride. Uh, what we need right now is the confidence that God loves us. Yeah. I was talking to somebody that, you know, uh, we have not yet experienced, many of us have not experienced and encountered the truth of the love of God for us individually. That you can be confident in that love. That nothing can tear you away, nothing can, can make you fearful when you understand that you are loved. That you don't have to pay, don't, don't, you don't have to perform to be loved by God. Do you understand this? And we all, as religious people, perform to gain the attention of God. He's got our attention. He's watching over us like the apple of his eyes. He loves us. Many times we think we are in pursuit of God. No, he is in pursuit of us. He pursues us individually in different levels, in different magnitude, in different instances. Because he does love us. No wonder he created us in his image, in his likeness. He gave us the authority to rule and, and manage and have dominion over all of his creation. How wonderful is that? And so I really believe that we need to return into a deeper and more intimate discovery of who God is in our life. And knowledge of God from that vantage point is going to help us to really embrace and encounter His presence. And I'll tell you, it'll never be the same again. Amen. We need to be, you, the world needs to see that difference. Not because we look cute or we all have all of this paraphernalia, but because we walk real, we walk true, and we deliver the true love of God. I'm the way I am because I know I don't have to perform. I know that I'm loved even though. And because I know I have confidence in that love, I, I rise. You know, I, I'm humble, but I am confident. Amen. So the other thing is uh, I would like uh, the part of this message is not going to be just for today, but maybe we will have another session. Let's pray about that, that the Lord will open that up for us. There will be understanding uh, the revival of intercessors. God is raising up intercessors and intercession in this season from the, you know, launching from the platform of intimacy and really an intimate encounter of the knowledge of God. Not just religion, not just head knowledge, not just emotion. Not just, you know, uh, this adulterated uh, influence of the world that has become like our, you know, our system. No. We, we, we will be cleansed. There will be a cleansing coming into the body of Christ. And that's why 
you know, this kind of message that we carry is not going to be popular. Because this needs death. You need to die to your ambition. You need to die to yourself. You need to die to your ego. You need to die to loving yourself, to loving others. Because Jesus said, you know, they will know that you are mine because you love one another. That's how I got that song. They will know us by our love. How else? Is there anything else? I guess because the world has not experienced this great love of God, that the world is not impressed with us Christians. We have a lot of show, performances, but very few reality, real expression of God. So basically that, and then, you know, the cry of the bride. So let me just give you a little bit of snippet on, you know, I got saved in, 19, uh, in 1981. That's so old, right? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> and been many places, in many situations, and, uh, and then, you know, in 2002, got exported to the United States of America by force majeure. <laughs> I'm intentional because I, I was never a lover of the United States of America. I never decided to live there. I used to be married to an American. They want to be an American citizen and so on and so forth. And so when, when he moved me there, it was really him who moved me. Of course, there are other situations that was, you know, uh, involved, but... Uh, so I just, I just found out that, you know, um, I need to move to the United States. So, but the reason we are here this morning is because this is part of my Thanksgiving. Like I was alluding to, uh, you know, the impression that the Lord showed me in June of 2001. He said, go to San Francisco and uh, do an event. We did an event like this, and, uh, but just to bring Thanksgiving. I, and then at the same time, he gave me a new mandate to really pray for San Francisco and the Bay Area and um, uh, for seven years. So we're going there. I guess I'm, I will still be alive seven years from now because that's an assignment, right? Good or bad. Anyway, so every quarter we go there. And, and you know, wonderful things have happened. That's why you can't, when, when it's God that appointed things and opened the way, I mean, things are just, it just flows. You don't have to stress, you don't have to strain, you don't have to do a vaudeville. Some of you don't even know what that is. You know, and you don't have to perform. You don't have to do anything, just flow. And it's so easy, so beautiful, so wonderful that you just step into that place, into that shoes where he's given you, and you just walk it. Amen. And at the same time, because because I believe there were other people doing it, but personally we just believe that God has opened that way and he uh, uh, connected us with some people like the group of Francis Chan. And they were also praying the next month that we were there. And so there's an open heaven in San Francisco. It's a hard place. But you know what? God loves hard places. Amen. Amen. Is famous for going into hard places, hard people, hard hearts. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, crap pots. I like that crap pot. So, anyways, so basically that. And so, um, we will be in San Francisco for seven years. Part of what we do is where uh, we go to a lot of mission places. We we do we we major on prayer and worship because that's what we're supposed to be, a house of prayer. Our name is Forerunners for Christ because we're forerun. We go ahead, we prepare the way, we open the way, we break through. And in many cases, that's supposed to be apostolically, you know, gifting, but um, I don't care. For, I mean, I mean, thank you, God, you know, if that's it. But we just move it, <laughs> just move there. And so this morning we will we will uh, have communion. Amen. So I've been now 41 years serving the Lord, and it's such a pleasure, and such an opportunity, and such a privilege. 
Because if I look at myself, who's going to like you? And God says, I will. I like you. Amen. I like you so much. I pursue you. See, I, see, this is the kind of relationship I'd like for us to, to begin to enter into. To be confident. That's why he's Abba, his father. I mean, have you seen your children, you know, our just to come to you? No. They just jump at you, regardless, right? And we need to be free like that. So, guys, shall we get ready with the communion? Uh, we carry for our ministry is a revival of communion. That it does not just become a thing that we do once a month. But it's something that we do do because we remember what he has done. And we intentionally allow ourselves to embrace what it means, the wealth, the riches, the impact, the life, the sustenance of what God has done for us. That Jesus died for us. That's so powerful. And unfortunately, as a church, sometimes as people of God, we kind of devalue that, belittle it. And that breaks my heart. And it should break your heart. And today, let's just open ourselves to a fresh and new understanding of communion. While they're doing this, let's let's play that song and then we can play it again. You listen to this song, this is a beautiful song. Every time, this season, every time we go, quarterly we go to San Francisco and we go to strategic places and we give communion to those places. Yeah, we're to go with that. So everybody just get ready and after communion we will commence with lunch and then we will work after that.
we're so deprived. But you know, he paid all the price so that we may be complete. One of the things I've learned is the word shalom. It's really salvation. Uh, it was, it's also so so in Greek. But Jesus, the Prince of Peace, put together every division. And shalom is a posture in a position where there are no infractions. There are no cuts, there are no breaks. It's totally whole. And that's what salvation is. We have salvation, we've been set free from sin. We have deliverance, we've been freed from all of these contraptions. And so wholeness is what uh, makes us different from the world. I heard one preacher say that, you know, peace is not because you have no trouble at all. Peace belongs to you in spite of all the trouble Amen. that surrounds you. That's real peace. It's not without. That's the, that's the measure of how much peace is in you. That's the shalom of God. That's why, you know, in, in, in Israel, when they always say shalom, shalom. But really, I don't want that to be a casual saying yes. or a casual greeting. Because it is a powerful word. Shalom. Let the wholeness of God be on you. Let the fullness of God be on you. Let the overflooding presence of God be on you. Shalom. So whenever I, you know, shalom, I just see the force of heaven just whoosh, coming to you. And so receive that. Shalom. Right? Hallelujah. Amen. Shalom in every empty part of your life. Shalom in every empty places in your relationship. Yes. Amen. And the shalom of God come to you and be rested. Feel you, strengthen you, encourage you. We're in a time and a season, a lot of people are broken, discouraged, disgruntled. And we cannot add to that. Every time I complain, I feel like I'm adding to the complaints of the world. So I don't go there. <laughs> yes, because we are different. Unfortunately for the world, what they do doesn't make any, any, anything, any, you know, doesn't make a cut or make any impact because that's their world. Amen. But when you and I do the things that they do, we <laughs> shut the face of God, break the face of the image of God in our lives, and we add to the kingdom of the devil, and we lessen the impact of it. is for us to be thoughtful of who we are. Thank you. Not just to be great, but be thoughtful. To, to understand the value that God has given us. I mean, who we are today, I stand here, not because, you know, of whatever reputation I might have. I'm, I'm standing here, and you're standing there because God loved us. Pay the price of his own beloved son in exchange. That's how much he loves us. Sometimes you can think that he loves us more than he loves Jesus because he would give Jesus away on our behalf. But they were both willing, son and father, preordained that we belong to him. So let's sing that song again.